Hi. Um, I am going to do the 10 most influential books tag today. Uh, I've been meaning to actually make another video for a little while because I made three kind of really quickly one after another and then um, it's been kind of almost a week I think. So um, I kind of didn't intend to do this many tags but I'm, I'm still reading um, a couple of books so I yeah I'm kind of between books and um, not really ready to do a review yet. I'm currently reading Uh, Americana, which it seems like everybody on Booktube has already read. Um, I bought it after oh, Frenchie D, I think. I think it was Frenchie D's review, which was just really great. Maybe we'll go out and buy it straight away, which I kind of did. Um, and I'm also reading The Orphan Master's Son, and I don't know where my copy copy is. Um, but I'm reading that, and I really am struggling. I've got about 150 pages left and I'm going to keep going till I finish it but oh, it's a bit of a slog which is a shame. I actually thought I'd really love it but uh, not so much. I kind of don't know what I think about it yet. I'm, yeah, I have mixed feelings. Anyway, today I'm going to do the 10 most influential books. Um, this, is, this is what I kind of like talking about I think. Why I like things and, and the impact that they've had on me and Okay, so, to start off, this is um, one of my favourite books in the world, if not my favourite, I just love it. It's um, Cat's Eye by Margaret Atwood, and this actual copy as well, as well as just loving the book, this copy is, um, oh, I love it. We, I actually had to read this book in, in high school, I think it was in year 11 and 12, um, and... I know a lot of people when they have to read a book for school, it kind of is a chore and I was really worried about, um, well, I kind of wanted to read Margaret Atwood for a while and I think when I found out that we had to read this one, it was assigned. I was worried because it would, I thought it would kind of drain all of the joy out of reading it, having to kind of analyse it and, and um, tear it to pieces and things. But I just absolutely loved it. it. It just kind of had a huge impact on me and still does. Um, it was the first Margaret Atwood book that I read and I've since read I think all of them except the last maybe one or two that she's written. Um, but it is just a, such a brilliant book. Um, it's about the central character Elaine and her kind of, um, I don't know, her life really, like her growing up as a child and kind of looks back through various phases of her life. Um, and it's really, like a lot of Atwood books, there's real um, themes of women and friendships between women and um, the tension between women. And um, one of the key relationships in this book is between the main character, Elaine, and her friend, Cordelia. And it just, um, I guess I, mean, I was... 15 or so when I read it and those kind of things I don't know I guess it struck a lot of chords with me I went to an all-girls school which was um oh, oh god high school was just the worst I just get oh, just thinking about it makes me just feel so horrible and just hate myself and everyone else again um so it was really kind of like a really good book to read at the time I think um actually this physical copy that still has like little bits of things that I've written that weren't even really notes from school but just like my feelings about it so I just yeah um so that's this one the next one is a book that I actually don't I don't know where my copy of it is it's, it might be at my mum's house or something but it's called Everywhere That Mary Went and it's by Lisa Scottaline and I read this it's it's influential because it's the first adult book that I read. Um, I was, I think, 12 um, or something like that. And I remember we were in Paris. My mum had a business trip and my sister and my father and I went as well. Um, and we were in Paris and I'd finished my book and there was nothing else to read. So I read this book that my mum had and it was, you know, a thriller or something. And it was, in hindsight, probably really shit and I probably would hate it. Um, but... It, I guess I read it and I was really into it and I read it really quickly and it kind of gave me the confidence that wow I can actually read adult books and I can go into any bookshop and look at any of the shelves. Um, so that kind of launched me down this path of like oh my god there's this whole buffet of stuff that I can read. 
Um, I actually read another Lisa Scudderline book last year when somebody gave it to me in a Chris Kringle and it was oh god among the worst books I've ever read it was so it was just atrocious like embarrassingly bad it was just oh so I have a feeling that everywhere that Mary went is probably similar but you know it meant a lot at the time I suppose yeah the next one oh I love this book um it's Oh, yeah, it's a funny one to love, I suppose. It's Roots by Alex Haley. Um, I read this book, I think, last year, and it is just really... Um, I learned so much from it, and it, it was a huge... Um, I don't know, I don't even know what to say, really. It was just a really brilliant book. It, um, essentially, it's about... Um, one man, well, it starts off being about this man, Kunta Kinte, and it starts off, um, he's growing up in his home in the Gambia, I think it is, um, and it starts off as a child, and he's um, playing with his friends and his brothers and things, and goes through a couple of rites of passage, and then essentially gets um, stolen or kidnapped and um, taken to be a slave so he's transported to America and it follows his story and then a couple of generations of his family um, and uh, are slaves essentially um, and their lives and the various kind of horrific things that they encounter. Um, it's a really moving and devastating and frustrating book. There's a, uh, I just kind of was, there's points where you're just like <gasps> And you just kind of think it's going to, something great is going to happen and he's going to be free or be granted his freedom or can buy it and then bam, something happens and he, it's all ripped away and he's lied to and um, cheated and it's just, the things that happen to these people is just horrendous and you just think, God, the number of people whose story this could be is just horrifying. Um, and I suppose it was... Um, uh, I guess it was the first kind of foray into like, slave history um, fiction that I've really had because I'm obviously Australian um, and it's not so, like American history is not really something that's um, taught I suppose I, I even have a history degree and I this is not American history like this period of American history is not really one that I um, ever really delved that much into um, except for my own reading um anyway this book was just had a profound influence on me and, and after this one I read a couple of other books um that I suppose were similar um but they all completely pale in comparison to this one which is just such a well written gripping um emotional it's just a really really brilliant book I highly recommend it the fourth one is um I actually looked in the cover it's called kiss the dust by elizabeth laird that's it um it's a child well i suppose a young adult you'll call it i don't really know um what makes something a young adult not but um it was given to me by my parents but you can see that dear alex ooh, to alex merry christmas from mum and dad 97 um and it is a story of um two girls I haven't actually read it since I was a child, but, um, or since I was like 12 or something. Um, one's an Iraqi refugee, or her and her family are from Iraq. I'm trying to read the blurb because I've completely forgotten, but, and now I blow my nose on camera. Mm, go me. The story, I guess, of Tara and her friend, um, and it's, uh, you know, I guess a war story, but for children, um, or young adults. And this is a book that kind of really got me into reading at a young age. Um, and it was, I guess, one of the first big girl books that I read because it's, you know, it's probably, it's 275 pages and I think everything I'd read up to then was a lot smaller and, yeah, kind of gave me confidence reading, I suppose. And I would actually like to read this again, I should, because it's obviously short and the, the, the text is large, relatively, um, just to see what it's, what I think of it now, I suppose. So, the next one, this is a, everybody's read this. Everyone knows about it. It's The Game of Thrones, George R. R. Martin. Everyone plus their mama has read this book. I know. Um, but I read this in a couple of years ago. I was working in a bagel shop while I was at uni. 
doing my arts degree and I worked with this girl called Blakey who read fantasy books almost exclusively and at that point I did not read fantasy books. I wouldn't even walk into that area of the bookshop because ah, for them at books, that's crap. I was basically had a pole up my ass. Um, and anyway, my friend Blake, he just kept talking and talking about these books and how I had to read one and blah, blah, blah. Eventually I thought, fuck, I'll just read one to shut her up and bought this book. I remember opening it. I remember I bought it in um, Dimmock's in Collins Place or wherever it is and went to the Australia on Collins um, food court and started reading it. Thought, oh my God, you got to be kidding and kept reading and then was completely hooked and this completely changed my attitude to fantasy books so it's as a result of this one that I read a great number more and that I really quite like fantasy books on occasion um yeah it's interesting I actually loved it that much but and I still haven't even watched the tv series which is terrible but when I read it it was just after the fourth book um A Feast for Crows had come out I remember Blakey was so excited about The Feast for Crows um and there was like this rumour, I don't know where, we may have even just like convinced ourselves that it was true, but there was this rumour that um, there was going to be a movie made of it and Vin Diesel was going to be in it. Fuck, I don't know. She was really excited. I reckon her friend may have made that up to just get her excited. I don't know. Anyway, never happened obviously. And I still haven't even finished watching the series. So I should do that. Um, the next one, oh, this is... Probably not the best one to actually show on camera because it's really a book that you need to see for yourself. But it's called um, Metamorphosis. It's I think it's book five of, I don't even know how many, six or something, by David Mack. It's a graphic novel. Um, this book I just picked up completely at random. I have no idea why I picked it up or bought it because it was shrink wrapped when I bought it. It's from a shop called Minotaur in Melbourne, which is a, I guess, like a cult book Um bookstore and they sell well it's, it, it only has fantasy and science fiction books really and comics and graphic novels um and they also sell kind of like figurines of stuff lots of star trek and doctor who memorabilia that kind of thing but this book is just amazing like it's, this is not going to do it justice but it is the most beautifully illustrated like every page is completely different um I don't even know how to properly show this, it's just ridiculous, but it is just a stunning, stunning book. There's not even any point to doing this really, but yeah, and I've, I've searched high and low and tried to find others in the series or anything else by David Mack, and I haven't ever been able to find anything else for years. So look, I don't even know, I guess it's just going to be like a single thing on my bookshelf that doesn't really fit in with anything else, but it's a really beautiful beautiful book and if you ever see it get it I guess or have a look at it because it really is unlike any other thing I've seen I suppose but maybe that's just because I'm not really that into that kind of thing and maybe it's there's heaps of shit like that that I just don't know about I don't know anyway the next book is a book that I've mentioned in my dog book video but I have to include it because it was hugely influential in my life it is The Other End of the Leash by Patricia McConnell um, as I mentioned in the other video, this book is just so good. It's, um, it's all about dogs and dog behaviour and how humans behave around dogs and how, um, it, yeah, anyway. Um, the next book is called Dead Aid, um, Why Aid's Not Working and How There's Another Way for Africa by Dambisa Moyo. Um, this book has been, it was hugely influential for me in that it completely, um, it, it, I guess it raised a lot of questions and opened my eyes to a lot of things, um, mainly about, well, foreign aid and the way that foreign aid works and why the current model is kind of not working or doesn't work. Um, essentially, billions and billions of dollars are thrown at, um, been thrown at countries for decades and essentially they're not that much better off for it. Um, so this book raises the question of why and essentially it proposes real kind of market-based solutions which mm, I'm not so convinced of its solution I suppose but um, look, it, it was really influential because it was a great starting point I suppose and I don't really agree with a lot of the responses it was quite controversial and a lot of people who work in development um, would 
I suppose she doesn't have a very good reputation in a lot of circles. Um, but yeah, look, it was a really interesting starting point and um, kind of opened up the, I guess, a lot of questions and a lot of um, issues that are still being sorted through and I suppose still will continue to be sorted through. Um, yeah. Uh, the last book I am going to talk about, I think that's 10, I can't actually count, <laughs> I don't know, is A Hundred Years of Solitude by um, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And I am including this because I fucking hated it. I hate this book more than I think any other book I can think of. I loathe it and I just... Mm. I know that a lot of people love this book. It's quite derisive, I suppose. I mean, uh, yeah, look, people love it or they hate it. Um, I hate it. Yeah. This is a book that I, again, had to read in high school. We, I, I did um, the IB, International Baccalaureate, and um, you have to study as part of that world literature. So when I did it, um, we did Latin American literature and read this book along with a number of others like um, some Isabel Allende, an Isabel Allende book, The House of the Spirits, and some other ones that people have probably heard of, like like Water for Chocolate and um, uh, Julia the Scriptwriter. And so, you know, there's kind of some, some common themes or elements to Latin American literature. Chiefly magic realism is usually, well, not usually, but in the ones that we read, you know, there's a lot of magic realism. There's a lot of magic realism realism in this book and I just maybe it's because I read it at the wrong time but I just loathed it I struggled to read to get through this book more than I think I, I've struggled to read any other book ever and I just yeah I see people reading it on the tram and I just think Ugh, shit, why are you even bothering but there you go H happy to argue happy to argue but yeah anyway um, yeah, so that's, I guess, influential. Well, it's not really influential. I just hate it. I just thought I'd include it just for a change. There you go. Um, so that's all, I think. And I guess my next, um, book, my next video will be probably a review and probably of, um, e The Orphan Master's Son once I finish it. Maybe. Yeah. I think. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, please let me know if you have any comments or suggestions and maybe one day I'll actually be able to make a video when it's not night time when I don't have to use my desk lights to try and create enough light to make a video. Maybe one day. That means I'd have to be organised. Anyway, thank you. Bye.